this is obsidian a s m a don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos hello everyone and welcome back to another obsidian
just putting that to one side. So, here is the artwork for Assassin's Creed 2 and the conspiracy book. Now, I played the original Assassin's Creed on the PlayStation 3, the which you may see in the future. But I won't go into too much detail. Here's Venice um, with that one. But effectively, Assassin's Creed 2 is a much bigger, much more detailed and um, a lot more polished uh, game compared to its original. There's Ezio with the Apple of Eden, or Staff of Eden. Everything is of Eden. And effectively, they took everything that worked so well in the first game and ramped it up to 10, even 11, even the friends. Um, this, for a lot of people, is their favorite game in the franchise because it was so novel and everything is so new. You know, meeting people like Leonardo da Vinci using his flying machine, um, or the dual wielding of the hidden blades. Assassin's Creed 2 is one of those rare um, examples in media where the sequel outperforms the original. Um, and it was so popular that it sparked couple of other games featuring Ezio uh, called Brotherhood and Revelations and those are the two look at that, that avatar uh, that I gave away because they were good and I enjoyed them but I'd kind of gone a bit stale Assassin's Creed, um, having played one all the way through to Syndicate, but I kept a couple. So what can I say about Assassin's Creed 2 other than I think it still is the best Assassin's Creed game in the franchise. Um, I really liked uh, Valhalla. I really liked Valhalla. I'm excited for Mirage because it's going to be Valhalla but smaller. But when I think of Assassin's Creed, I think of this and I think of the first game. And if I'm being complete, probably Assassin's Creed 4. Black Flag. I think it's a perfect 10. Just as it's anybody who's played it. Or nowadays, if you want to go and play it, I'd recommend the um, Ezio collection, which is this Revelations and Brotherhood. Uh, but this was amazing. I got everything in it. Collected all the feathers. Got the... Um, cloak. Um, got all the achievements. Loved it. So, I can't sing its praises highly enough, really. And then, I kept this one. Join or die. It says, I would probably rather die. <laughs> um, I'm joking, I wouldn't. This doesn't even have the game in it. I must have given that away as well. But I do have this join or die. 
I guess, the manual. So there you go. Uh, I can't really talk about it much, which is probably how you would uh, you would like it in the fan base. But I will talk a little bit about it, just to say I didn't like it. What made Assassin's Creed 2 so popular was its charismatic protagonist in the form of Ezio. And this one, Connor, is basically dull. Nothing there. Um, quiet. Doesn't talk a lot. Tries to be Master Chief, but it doesn't come across that way. Um, just boring. And I would say that the more interesting bits are the villains, like his father. Um, I thought I would love it in Revolutionary America. I just couldn't get into it. I didn't. I don't think I completed it, which is rare for an Assassin's Creed game. Um, out of all the ones I've played, the only two I haven't completed with this and Syndicate, which again, I was hyped for that due to its setting, but I was let down pretty badly. So I'd give this a four. It didn't really do much that Assassin's Creed 2 hadn't already done. Bit of a disappointment. And now I just have a empty box, like the empty shell that was this game. Um, it is what it is. Uh, sorry if that's upset any of you. Now, we move on to another quintessential trilogy of games for the original Xbox 360. That would be Gears of War. Now, in the previous uh, video, I talked about my love of Halo. This is another franchise that I didn't jump onto until Gears of War 2, but I grew to really love. So the first game um, left an impression on me because of the villains. I think the villain in this one is Rom, I think. Um, but you follow this ragtag group of Marcus Phoenix, Dom, the Coltrane, As they fight against the Locust Horde, uh, who have basically uh, emerged from a geographic fault line and started attacking humanity. They called it Emergence Day. They've quickly overran um, the planet, or areas of the planet. Uh, leaving humanity quite disparate. And through it, you have to use um, your lancer, featuring a chainsaw, uh, and use kind of cover-based combat, which, as you know, I quite like, because of games like The Division or Rainbow Six Vegas 2 that I talked about in the previous uh, part of this. So again, this was an era of gaming where the original was stunning. 
Gears of War 2 was even better. Um, I remember with this uh, two things. The first was the very emotional scene where Dom gets reunited with Maria, but she's uh, already been turned into a husk, or partially, and um, Dom has to kill her. I know, spoilers, but the game's been out for like 15 years. Um, but then, on top of that, in the first mission, uh, I think it's with Dizzy, who's a cowboy, you're riding this um, kind of like big uh, combat vehicle, and you have to go down a linear path while shooting the locust, but dotted along the path are cowboy hats, and if you if you shoot all of them, when the crawler bursts through the wall. Uh, at the end of the linear path, he is wearing, bearing in mind this is like a big spider-like or a lobster-like creature, it's wearing a massive cowboy hat, and it bursts through the wall, and it goes, found that amusing. But yeah, a lot like Assassin's Creed 2, Gears of War 2 takes everything that was good about Gears of War, ramps it up a notch, and delivers, again, one of the most acclaimed sequels of the time. Just for the story, but for the online gameplay, where you could, or I think you've even got horde mode in this, um, all of which were phenomenal. And um, yeah, the, I, I spent many hours on this as well. Then came Adam Phoenix. And Gears of War 3. Um, so I got the special edition and it does come with a medal but I'm not sure where that is at the minute. I'll take it out. Um, this was fine whilst Gears of War safe. You know, it basically did everything that Gears of War 2 did. Um, and there were some, you know, good moments, like when Dom sacrifices himself and the after effects on Marcus. Um, and then, you know, you go and face the Locust Queen. And then he loses his dad as well. It was fine, you know, and you got to face the Lambeth, um, as well as the normal Locust, which are like corrupted, explosive Locust. Um, but the one that sticks more in the memory for me is Gears of War 2. Uh, all very gory. Uh, a little bit of horror too much, um, and some big emotional uh, punches throughout the trilogy. So I think I would give Gears of War 1 an 8 out of 10, Gears of War 2 a 10 out of 10, and Gears of War 3 
I'd probably give a seven. So there's that. See, we're cooking now. Oh no. Another trilogy. Any guesses? I'll give you five, four, three, two, one. Well, if you said mass effect, you'd be correct. effect. Wow. So, Mass Effect follows Commander Shepard, who you can have as a man or a woman, as evidenced. cover. So, as a woman, she's a redhead. As a man, he's a brunette. But Mass Effect 2 is weirdly similar, or a, a kind of crossover between Halo and Gears of War. There's an added, um, I guess, mechanic through this, which is the decisions you make in Mass Effect affect <laughs> Mass Effect 2, and the decisions you make in Mass Effect 2 affect Mass Effect 3. So, part of the fun of this is being a paragon, um, and you can choose whether to be good, or whether to be bad, or your romances, uh, and just interactions, and who to recruit into your teams. So Mass Effect 2 was very heavy on that. Um, and at the time, I had a couple of friends um, who were very, very into Mass Effect. And in fact, one of them gave me this, which is signed by uh, one of the voice actors, which was a very kind thing for them to do. But effectively, um, I think you go through this and there is a galactic threat. I think it's the Geth to begin with. But in the first game, the bad guy is Saren, which is this guy, who I think is some kind of renegade from a council. I can't quite remember. But he's basically like a prophet that has been enlightened and now is acting as a vessel to bring about um, what we perceive as the destruction of the cosmos. When actually it could be argued I think that he was trying to save it, but I'm not sure. So in Mass Effect 2, um, Shepard is revived by the Cerberus network and the Invisible Man, I think. Um, but effectively, Shepard has to um, 
as it says here, recruit a team in order to stop it. I think that's Miranda. I forget what his name is. Um, and I remember there are certain, uh, there's the Krogan. And I remember another race which was like, their hair, and I'm tempted to say her name was like Sarah or Saraya or something like that, but I can't remember, it's been a long time since I played these to be fair. Mass Effect 3, a 9. Uh, 
Mass Effect 2 and 9 because I can't really separate them in my own head. What I will say is I never played Andromeda uh, because apparently it was awful. <laughs> so there you go. Next, Dead or Alive 4, which was effectively um, Xbox's version of Tekken or Mortal Kombat. That's about it. Uh, I won't lie, I didn't play it much. Uh, this was one of the first games that I ever bought for the 360. I think it came with the 360. Um, my original one. Yeah, and this was 2005, which, I won't lie, for 2005, I, I think the packaging is stunning. And you know, these wavy lines were very much ahead of their time. That kind of stuff is, I mean, if you watch football, that was the branding for um, the Europa League and the Europa Conference League in the last couple of years. So I think the branding was really good. The gameplay was fine. I just didn't really connect with it like I did with Tekken. So I'd probably give it a four, maybe a five. Um, yeah, let's go with a five. I think that's probably fair. Now, we've got about three, four more franchises. I think the next one I'm going to talk about, I've already talked about in a previous video. So I'll summarize. Borderlands. I played a lot of this. I didn't play this all the way through. They're loot and shooters. That's what they are. Um, there's Lilith, who made it all the way to Borderlands 3, which I did play all the way through. Uh, and honestly, I think that's Zero, and there are some others, but you play as a Vault Hunter.
forces you to get good. Um, I think I'd give it, I think I'd give it a seven. And then Borderlands 2, I would give a nine. I would have given it a ten, but I haven't played through it all. From what I did play through, it was very enjoyable. Uh, it was very funny. And it has that kind of British tongue-in-cheek humour in both of the games. And all the sequels that I very, very much enjoy. Um, you know, one of my favourite games of recent memory was Borderlands 3. So, I like this franchise. There we go. Speedy through those. Right. Three more franchises. Fable. This one's a little worse for wear. I remember... I'm going to say this first. I remember going to get Fable 3 with a friend of mine who was also really into it um, from Germany and he uh, he was visiting me at the time we went and we picked it up and we were hoping it would be as good as Fable 2. Sadly, it was not. Um, Fable 2 is a masterpiece. I'm saying it now. Lionhead Studios, again, a English game company, uh, successfully captured the feeling of medieval England as you rise, as it says, from a penniless street urchin to become Albion's greatest hero, um, either utilizing brute force with melee attacks, ranged attacks, which I think are guns, or magic. And you have a faithful companion that goes all the way with you. Fable has a morality system in both games uh, where you can be the good guy or the bad guy depending on the choices you make in the game a lot like Mass Effect um, it was very in vogue at the time a bit of a new feature I played Fable 2 like two or three times um, it was really great from start to finish. Uh, I think the bad guy in that was a lot more um, intriguing, although I've forgotten who he is, uh, compared to the bad guy in Fable 3, who is your brother, and then when you take the crown, you can choose to become the bad guy or not. Whereas in Fable 2, I think, I think it is, I think you have like a sister to begin with, and then somebody kills her or something like that. 